We spent some time making plans, but very little was decided on. The hermit had to be dealt with, that much was clear, but it was the how that eluded us. We could take him alive, but then we'd have to guard him. We could kill him, but neither of us were sure that we could kill somebody. He had to be stopped, but how could we do it? First thing we gotta do is find him, Gale said. If he can travel, then he might be anywhere. We need to track him down and see where he is. If he's going back, then FF would be a good place to start. True. If nothing else, we might find out more about him. What's to know? He's a crazy old dude, I said, adding a length of rope to my bag. If we were going to find his lair, then there was a good chance that we could set a trap for him. True, but was he always? I don't know how long this old guy's lived in the Dollar General Beyond. He could have come here when they were still called J.L. Turner and Sons. Hell, crazy dude could be Cal Turner, for all I know. Who? I asked, not having a clue what he was talking about. Sorry, I don't know why I would have expected you to know the store's history. Cal Turner took over after his father died and officially named the store Dollar General after that. Word was that he went missing sometime after opening the first one, just stepped into one of his own stores and was never seen again. His son ran them when I worked here, but I suppose he'd be an old man by now. Cal and Carl, his son, looked a lot alike, and it took the company years to admit that the owner was gone. Some people say that he just became a recluse, but I know managers who were close to the family, and they swore that the rumors were true. Anyway, I doubt the old man is Cal. He'd be older than hell and likely twice as crazy. I didn't like to think about another lost soul trapped here, but it did make me wonder how many others were taken prisoner by this place. I had no clue how long I had been there, but I knew it hadn't been very long compared to Gale, and Gale believed the old man had been here longer than that. If people didn't age, then who's to say Cal Turner wasn't here somewhere? Who's to say there might not be any number of people? traversing the infinite, or not-so-infinite, Dollar Generals. And if there were, why hadn't we met any of them? Have you ever met anybody else? I asked him, before I could think better of it. Sad you, Gale said, smiling a little at the thought of it. No one other than the Hermit and Selene, I guess. He got a little speculative then. Thinking about his friends always made him quiet and thoughtful, and I hated that. Gale was a good dude, and I didn't think he should be inundated with guilt over people he had no control over. He'd done his best, plain and simple, and they had done what people do. I just thought of something, I asked suddenly as I slid a cold brew coffee into my backpack. If he's going through the doors, then shouldn't he stop being crazy? Gale cocked his head at me. What do you mean? Well, you said that all injuries and damage to clothes and stuff are fixed when you go through the doors again. If he's rattled from his time here, then shouldn't he be kind of, I don't know, reset or something when he goes through the door? Gail pulled his bottom lip into his mouth, chewing on it as he thought the question over. The doors had always healed anything that was wrong with us in the past. Whether it was a wound or ripped clothes, it always fixed us, and we were pretty reliant on it for clothes and general fixes. If the crazy hermit was able to travel while remaining in his wrong mind, then maybe the doors didn't reset you as much as we thought. Hell, Rudd, I don't know. Maybe he's messed up enough in the head that he thinks that's just how it is. Certain amount of what we do with the doors happens in our heads. I don't claim to understand all of it. Sometimes it works different for different people. It works the way it works for you because that's how it works for me, and I'm the one who taught you. He may have learned differently, so it works differently for him, I guess. Maybe we can ask him, if we manage to grab him. I nodded, trying to ignore that he had called me Rudd again. Rudd, or Rudy, had been his son, and the more comfortable he got with me, the more often he slipped up. I don't mind, not really. If he thought of me as his son, then I was okay with that. No, it was... Gale, who seemed to mind. Even now, he had realized that he had said it, and his face had gotten stormy. 
I knew he was still looking for Rudy, still looking for all of them, but the chances of finding them seemed to dwindle the longer they stayed gone. Rudy had gone after another of Gail's original group, but it seemed that no one came back from the ceiling. I was already trapped in the Dollar General Beyond. I wasn't in a big hurry to get trapped somewhere else. Got everything? Gail asked, pulling on his pack and taking up his club. We had never really carried weapons, not like this, but after finding the hermit in other stores but his, we had started taking them with us. We had taken wooden chair legs and hammered nails into them. They weren't very sturdy. They were mostly spiked particle board, but they would do in a pinch. We had taken some of the hoodies off the rack and sewn cardboard into them. They weren't great, but they would do too. The cardboard wouldn't do a lot, but it was the best we could manage. Ready, I said, making the chunky sweater as comfortable as I could before we set off. I wanted to start an FF, but Gail said that we should go check a few key places first. I have some safe houses I want to make sure he hasn't hit yet. It's nothing impressive, just some food and things that I've come across in my travels. I made notes as we went, and here's where we went from my journal. It's starting to come along, but I know it's a drop in the ocean and a long run. B. Normal Fall Store. Designation, Low Danger. People, Zero. Theme, Fall Decor. B is a perfectly normal Dollar General that's been set up for fall. It's got pumpkins and scarecrows, and some of the Halloween decorations are there, but not all. It has some seasonal items, but it seems to be the start of the autumn selection and doesn't contain as much as it would by the end of October. Gail had apparently been there before and left a go bag. He went to the manager's office and opened up the red box that usually held the fire extinguisher. Instead, there was a backpack that Gail took out and unzipped. He looked over the things inside, talking under his breath as he made sure it was all still okay. All right, I didn't think he would come this far, but it was possible. Let's go to the next one. We did a quick check before leaving, but everything appeared to be in place. The things I had used were gone, but nothing else seemed to be taken or moved. We still weren't sure that he could take things with him, but... As we moved on, we were in full data collection mode. OO, Night Store. Designation, Moderate Danger. People, Zero. Theme, A Dark Store with Lamps. OO is a shadowy place, and one of the few stores without the buzzing overhead lights. It's lit by tall metal street lamps, and the light they make doesn't go very far. It does not appear to have a ceiling. Any attempt to shine a light up there reveals nothing, and Gale thinks that it's likely it's here to simulate a night sky. Some of the shelves are pushed over, and I suspect that the miasma can come and go freely here. We've never encountered them here, but it seems likely that we could, so we try not to linger. Gale hit the ground running when we got to OO. None of us liked to be here, but he felt like it might be a good place to hide something because of the environment. The whole store was pitch black and lit by these interspaced lamp posts that cast yellow globes over the shelves. He reached between two shelves and took out a duffel bag, handing me the light as he went through it on the run. When he had established that everything was there, he zipped it up and we headed out. There was a sound as we came to the door, something like the moaning wind from the shadowy ceiling, and we were through before we could discover what it was. Store Triple E the cave store. Designation, highly dangerous. People, zero. Theme, a store inside a cave. Triple E is a store inside a cave, as the name entails. The lighting is glowing fungus that bathes everything in a mysterious glow. The shelves are carved into the stone and some of the items are made of rock. In the middle of the store is a pool of water that's okay to drink from, but contains a monster. Gale says it's a big crocodile, and that it comes out to walk around on occasions. It chased us the last time we were there, and it's easily ten foot long. There are bats that hang from the ceiling, though Gale isn't sure what they eat since there are no bugs here. He's never seen them move either, so no one is sure what they do as well. The food here is refrigerated by the cave, which is a consistent 65 degrees at all times and nothing seems to spoil or go bad. 
We came into the cave looking for the creature who lived here. We had been here a few times. The store had a great selection of mushrooms, but the last time we had come face to face with the gator who lived here. I hadn't really believed Gale when he told me about it, but it was hard to deny it when you were face to face with the monster. He had a long snout like a crocodile, and his scales seemed to shift through a series of colors as he came hissing after us. He was slow, thankfully, and we got out before he could catch us, but I suppose that put my rule about no living creatures in the DGB into question. He was in his pool today, at least we assumed he was, and Gale pushed a rock aside as he took out another backpack that he had checked over. Most of these bags had things like first aid kits, non-perishable food, and toolkits that could be used to make traps and snares. Gale had set them up just in case he needed to secure another store or travel the infinite for a while, and I was sure that these weren't the only ones. Gale had been here long enough to set up safe houses in several stores, and the one in the DGB Zero was just the first in a long line, I was sure. Okay, Gale said, pushing the rock back into place. He hasn't found any of these. I can't think that he has any real skill with travel, but if we haven't come up on him, then he must have enough to go back and forth. Are we ready to check FF then? I asked, still feeling that it should have been our first destination. Not yet, Gale said. Let's check a few random places. If he's just traveling willy-nilly, then we might find him somewhere near FF. I nodded, seeing the logic, and... As we set off, we went to GG first. GG was the place I had stopped after my initial encounter with the oldster, and it was a store set up for Mother's Day shopping. The whole place smelled of flowers, and I really enjoyed coming here. It was nice, and the whole atmosphere seemed to glow a light pink. GG was fine, but as we moved into HH, we could tell that someone had been here. HH was a normal store, except for that all the words were reversed. It was like a weird mirror store and looked like someone had ripped open a couple of the bags of chips and ate them right off the floor. They were scattered like a rat had been at them and though we weren't absolutely sure it was him at first, we found more of his leavings down one of the aisles and decided that it was a good enough calling card for our little friend. We checked a few other stores, some of them bore similar signs of visits. Food scattered, trash tossed around and a Nice healthy dump left nine times out of ten. Now are we ready to check FF? I asked, tired of looking at scat and stepping on chips. I suppose we should, Gale said after finding his calling card in another store. Seems unlikely we'll just run up on him while he's being so sporadic. Gale seemed like he didn't really want to go to the hermit's lair, but it was our best bet of finding him at this point. We stepped into the dump without much fanfare the hermit's store looking as desolate as ever. The floor crackled under our feet as the wrappers and garbage crunched underfoot. He had just been dropping his trash in the same manner that he dropped his waste, and the whole store stank with a mingling of rotten food and human crap. I didn't want to be here either, but we had to go make sure he wasn't hanging out and waiting for company. We stayed close, searching every shadowy nook and dirty cranny, but... We couldn't find the old man hiding anywhere. Okay, it was a good idea, but I guess he's out. Come on, let's try somewhere else. We were leaving the back area, near the automotive section, when my foot struck something and I stumbled. I immediately wished that I had been looking where I was going as I fell face first into a pile of dirty rags, my nose coming into contact with the worst smell I had ever experienced. Imagine old sweat unwashed clothes, dirty bathroom aroma, and a hobo camp on a hot day, and you're pretty close. I came staggering up, trying to get away from it as quick as I could, but when my hands fell on a plastic holder with what felt like paper in it, I reached back and pulled it out too. It was a backpack, one shoulder strap ripped from the bag, and inside was a journal. It was old and cracked, the leather extremely abused by the owner's hands and many openings. The paper inside was curled at the corners, and there was a bookmark inside of a happy cat with a fish in his mouth. The handwriting inside was neat, a meticulous script that had been written with care, and I doubted that the crazy old man had done it. 
There was a lump in the middle of it, and I thought it might be a button or a name tag. It's, but I heard Gale grunt as something came screaming from the top of the nearby shelf. The old hermit had returned, and it appeared that we had found something he treasured. Gale turned to catch him, but he landed on him and knocked the wind out of him. The old man was off and capering towards me, his teeth bared and his face a mask of crazed rage. He rushed me like a linebacker, knocking me over as his long, dirty fingers closed around my neck. My air was instantly cut off, his nails digging into the back of my neck as he screamed and gibbered in his weird language. I tried to fight back, I tried to push him off, but he was solid for someone so old. Shoving at him was like shoving at a boulder, and he leaned into me as I slowly strangled. Black spots started appearing in my vision as his greasy fingers choked me to the point of unconsciousness. I wondered if the door would bring me back to life when he inevitably collapsed my windpipe. Would Gale be allowed to drag me back through it, or would this crazed loner simply bite my throat out and eat me right here? When his blood splattered my face, I supposed I'd never get to find out. As his fingers loosened, I could see Gale standing behind him, panting as he released the handle of his weapon. The nails were sticking out of the hermit's skull as he shook and gurgled, and when I slipped to the ground, his blood made dark stains on the blankets that he had used as a bed. Gale stepped away, shaking as badly as the old man had been, and when he ran for the door, I followed after him. When I came through into the DGB Zero, but he didn't. I knew something was wrong. Now I'm left here with just the journal for company, feeling like maybe we've crossed a line that neither of us were ready for. I'll keep you all posted, but for now, I think I need to go and think about what's happened today. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to... Siv Garstead and Unicorn Hollow for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J, and Sue Casper for being our spooky skeleton contributors. And thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zoronan, Emily Coltsfoot, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, Sarah ASMR42, and Bella Lee for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. Thanks everyone so much. We just couldn't do the show without you. If you too would like to support the show, come on down to Patreon or become a member on YouTube. For just $5 a month, you get your stories 12 hours early at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. Also, if you'd like to join our Ghostly Reader contributor tier over on Patreon, you get a book anytime I write one on your doorstep. As long as you live in the continental U.S., of course. And as always... Thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.